like it or not, and there's a lot of not out there, artificial intelligence is here to stay. 2024, a big year for so-called generative AI, that is chatbots and image makers and video creators. But as we gear up to enter a new year, here's a question, maybe even ChatGPT would be stumped. What next? We are joined now by a generative, <laughs> generative AI expert. His name is Sam Gregory. Sam. Hi, Sam. So, okay, let's talk about OpenAI. They launched something called Sora. There was a beta released, but it's coming in the future. What is it? How does it work? What should people know? Sure. So Sora came out of beta last week, and it is a tool to take a sentence and turn it into a video, take a video and extend it, take an image and turn it into a video. And so I think what people should know is this is this incredible tool that carries both sides of what I think people hope for and worry about with AI, right? It has the potential for creativity, right? The ability to, as I did with my kid last night, create so a video. these videos right yeah, here that you're video. looking yeah. at, these are AI generated, these are not real puppies. These, those, those I could see are pretty, fake puppies, but, yeah. but that looks real. It does look real, and this is the one from February even. Oh. That's not the one from now that does even physics and movement even better, right? So what you're doing is like, you know, Think about, actually, I'll, I'll give you an example of the progress. Let's, let's look back to November last year. People probably remember the Will Smith eating spaghetti video, right, where it's like kind of the spaghetti molds into his face. It bubbles everywhere. Now you can get an image of someone eating spaghetti where the physics of the spaghetti look right, which, oh. as you know, it's quite hard to eat spaghetti, and it's quite hard to capture that with AI. So we've had this giant leap forward in the ability to create video using AI. So, so what are the risks for people? Besides like seeing something that you think is real or, and is not, like what, what do people need to know about this? So the risks are, these are increasingly hyper-realistic videos that can do everything from, as I say, create a fictitious video from a sentence to extend a video, right? And make it seem like maybe something happened after extend something. Extend a real video? At the moment, extend an AI video, okay. but let's assume it's, it's coming, gonna yeah. come or What's... turn an image into a video. And so think about how those can be used deceptively in the so real weird. world. This thing called Grok, is that a Gronk? Grok? Grok. Grok? I think of Gronkowski, but this is not a Gronkowski <laughs> project. This is coming from X, right? Uh, this is, yeah. Was available only to premium users of X, now it's available to everybody. Yeah, so as of last week, you can do some limited queries on Grok, which is the AI on X. And you can create images with it, you can ask chatbot questions. And what's really interesting about Grok is it doesn't have guardrails. So you can ask it, as people did during the lead up to the election, to create an image of you know, President Trump or Vice President Harris doing something ludicrous. Mm -hmm. and, and most people did that to make fun stuff, you know, President Trump on a lion, or maybe parodic stuff like you know, Vice President Harris wearing communist attire. Yeah. But they also used it to create images of people in misleading ways in relation to the elections. So these image generators have the same thing, right? They're part of how we participate and are creative, but they also have these really significant risks. Man, this is just wild. So the, the next thing that you think we should all be fo focused on is agentic AI, uh, something called, is it cloud, that allows you to basically have an, uh, an assistant in, in AI form, not just give you the results of like searching for, for uh, you know, like flights or something, but actually book the flights for you? Yeah, so this is called agentic AI, and a good example is Claude Sonnet. Claude comes from the company Anthropic, but the other companies are doing it as well. And basically think of it as you give the authority to uh, the AI to, to do a task, book travel, you say, here, use my credit card, use my computer, have web access. And on one hand, that's great. Like some of us don't want to book travel. It's kind of tedious. And, but on the other hand, right, we're putting a lot of trust in that AI with our credit card data. And at a society level, we're putting a lot of trust that it doesn't do, we don't have people asking it to do malicious tasks that it doesn't act with bias, that it protects our data. So it's a big step forward that has, again, big pros and cons if we don't get it right. I was at a big fancy lunch once and I sat next to the founder and CEO of one of these big uh, AI companies, one of the big five, and I said, uh, how do you feel? And he told me, 10 out of 10 excited, 10 out of 10 scared. Mm. Even the people within the industry have qualms and worries about the direction of things. With that as preface, <laughs> how should people feel about 2025 and the continued development of this stuff? So I, th I think there's reason to be worried. Like a lot of my work is dealing with the deceptive side and what we've seen is as yet, people really don't know kind of the recipe of what's going into 
these images and videos, right? If you encounter a hyper-realistic video, increasingly you're never gonna know whether it was made with AI. Mm -hmm. So we've gotta get much better at showing the recipe, like what were the ingredients, the AI, the human, that went into the videos we see. And we don't have that yet, right? So I think we need to deal with trust issues but first and foremost. You need regulation in order to be able to have cues like this was developed with AI to trust it. What is the state of regulation of AI and what can we expect with the, the Trump administration? Yes, yeah, so this is one area, this idea that we need the signals and we need the transparency where regulation is happening globally and there's a push, right? The European Union is pushing forward on this. Now, I don't know whether under an incoming Trump administration and Republican House and Senate, whether we'll move on this, but it's a low hanging fruit because it's a way to make sure that the public can have trust in what they're encountering and decide whether it's you know, delightful creativity like the dancing puppies in the snow or malicious deception that they wanna be wary of. And people are worried, right? They're worried about financial scams. They're worried about oh, sexual wow. images made with AI. So we need to address the trust side first. We have been warned. Sam Gregory, thank you so much.